First at five, day three of a five-day strike for hundreds of people working in the Providence Health System. Thank you for joining us. I'm Laurel Porter. And I'm David Mulco. Those nurses hitting the picket lines in Portland and Seaside are asking for higher wages and better benefits. Our Mike Benner has an update from the coast. Late Wednesday morning outside Providence Seaside. The honks coming from passing vehicles are a sign of the love the coastal community has for the nurses and clinicians on day three of a five-day strike. Oh, the support has been amazing from the community. Amazing. Ingrid Betcher handles triage and wound care at Providence Seaside. She's one of the approximately 1,800 nurses and clinicians from that hospital, Providence Portland Medical Center, and Providence Home Health and Hospice, who walked off the job Monday. We want to be in there and some of our wound care patients have driven by today and say we are going to need you next week. We are really a family here. Roxanne Welch is another nurse on the picket line outside Providence Seaside, a hospital she's called home for nearly two decades. 19 and a half years here and I just, I want everybody to have parity and equal opportunity in the hospital, which the clinic nurses do not have. Welch and her colleagues want higher wages and better benefits. Providence officials say they're offering that in the form of additional hours of paid time off and a 12% raise. But judging by this caravan through downtown Seaside, nurses and clinicians aren't pleased, nor are people we met on the street. Well, I don't think they get paid enough. Nahalem resident Tammy Hampton hopes the men and women on strike get what they want and return to work. The last thing Hampton wants is another strike, yet again impacting the hospital closest to her. So I don't want to drive 30, 50 miles to go to one, you know, so it's just one of those things. Providence officials argue that even though the hospital in Seaside is operating at only 50 percent capacity, all is good. After all, Providence did bring in replacement nurses to cover for those walking the picket line. But as those nurses and clinicians will tell you, it's just not the same. We're going to go back on Monday and we're going to we're going to do what we do best, be nurses. In the several days these nurses and clinicians have been on the picket line, they tell me they know they have seen replacement nurses passing them in cars and heading into the hospital to go to work. And they tell me there's no animosity there. They know those men and women have a job to do, and it's a good thing because at the end of the day, it is all about the patients. And that explains why these people are eager to get back to work at the end of the week when this strike ends. Reporting in Seaside, I'm Mike Benner for KGW News. Meanwhile, Legacy's Mount Hood Birth Center in Gresham has reopened. You might remember Legacy shut it down in March without state approval. Administrators at the time blamed a staffing shortage and fewer babies being born there. The community pushed back. The state jumped in. Legacy says the birth center, the only one of its kind in East County, will now be staffed around the clock. It has been a frustrating day for many people needing to use the DMV as a system outage forced the closure of many offices across the state. ODOT officials said the outage is affecting multiple state agencies today. However, the downtown DMV location was open when a KGW photographer went by, by about 3 o'clock this afternoon. ODOT said the outages are not related to the recent Move It data breach. In Salem, it's a race to get bills passed with just a few days left of the session, though things hit a bit of a snag with not a walkout, but an internet outage. Tim Gordon is at the state capitol, and Tim, even with the outage, the House passed two controversial bills, the very one Senate Republicans walked out over. Uh, that's right. These are the bills on abortion rights and gender affirming care and gun regulation that Republicans were so taking issue with, but then a compromise by both sides got things going again, and those two bills, along with a lot of others, are headed to the governor's desk. We have programs operated by the military and declaring emergencies in both time 41 related to health insurance coverage and breast examinations. After an internet outage throughout the Oregon State Capitol, finally back to passing legislation and top of list, two bills at the crux of the Republican walkout this session. The walkout was in the Senate and ended late last week. Today, House lawmakers passed bills that were diluted in a compromise deal to get back to work. House Bill 2002 will provide stronger abortion rights and require insurance to cover gender affirming care. Among other things, Democrats agreed to a change that requires parental permission for abortions for those 15 and younger in most cases. Still, Republican opposition. And I am sad and I am bone tired 
and I really wish that I were not standing here today. But not enough to stop it. The amended bill passed 35 to 12. House Bill 2002C preserves the rights Oregonians had under Roe v. Wade and further promotes health and safety by or, by or, for Oregonians by codifying the right of the full spectrum of reproductive health care. As for the gun regulation bill, HB 2005, Democrats gave up more in their compromise, only outlawing untraceable ghost guns, but giving up raising the age to purchase most guns from 18 to 21 and giving cities the right to ban concealed weapons in public buildings. But Republicans still balked. Colleagues, this isn't going to change gun violence. Once again, when are we going to realize that passing more laws aren't going to make criminals legal. Nonetheless, Democrats in the majority passed 2005 and can now celebrate victory on arguably two of the most consequential bills this session. House Bill 2005C, having received the constitutional majority, is declared repassed. And another bill that passed on the Senate side today will allow Oregonians to pump their own gas if they want to across the state. It is looking like the end of an era in that case. Back to you in Portland. We'll not have to uh, cross the Columbia for that hands-on experience, right? Thank you, Tim. We've got some startling new details this evening about the Army specialist who allegedly opened fire at a campground next to the Gorge Amphitheater over the weekend, killing two people. Court documents now say the suspect may have been hallucinating after taking mushrooms. 26-year-old James Kelly appeared in court today in Grant County. Prosecutors say Kelly was hallucinating when he told his girlfriend the world was ending, grabbed a gun from his car and shot her, followed by three other people. Two women from Seattle who were engaged to be married were killed. Jocelyn Ruiz and Brandy Escamilla were nurses and apparently tried to intervene before the shots were fired. Kelly's girlfriend and a father from Eugene survived. Authorities say Kelly also fired at a police drone before a deputy shot him. The su suspect is now facing two counts of first degree murder and remains in jail without bail. For the second time in a month, thieves have hit a fire station in the Lebanon Fire District. Back in late May, a fire investigation trailer at Station 33 in Fairview was broken into. Thieves made off with tools, lights, and cameras. Then, this past weekend, thieves stole this pickup truck from Station 31. The truck belongs to the Benton County Shops, which provides vehicle and maintenance services for the fire district. Call the Lynn County Sheriff's Office if you have any information. Oregon State Police are looking for the vandals who damaged the Hesita Head Lighthouse in Florence. The historic landmark on the Oregon coast started operating in 1864. Last Thursday, four people were caught on camera at the lighthouse. Two of them broke a window and tried to get in. They also spray painted signs and one of the buildings. Yeah, we're told the damage may run as much as $20,000. Lots of surveillance photos there. If you recognize anybody who did that damage, contact Oregon State Police.